Today, we're going to talk about how you can defeat ageism. Hey, if you've been thinking about coming to Coder Foundry but didn't want to move to North Carolina, go to coderfoundry.com slash virtual. We've launched a brand new virtual program that allows you to attend our classes from wherever you are inside the U.S. That's coderfoundry.com slash virtual. So today, let's talk about a question we get all the time. And that question is, am I too old to code? And a lot of times we get this from people from all ages, believe it or not. We get it from people that are 29, thinking they're too old to code, 39, 49, and 59. And you're probably thinking it's just older people that do it, but young people do is ask us as well, is it too old for me to break in? And somehow they think that, I guess everyone that codes is 23 years old, and then after you're 24, you age out. And that's so far from the truth. What I think really fuels this is a couple of things. It's fear, number one. So let's take the 29-year-old that um, several months ago asked me, am I too old to break in? I think what that is really coming from in a place is that all of the circle of your friends around you are thinking they've already found their career or they found their way. And you're thinking that I haven't really done that yet. And so like you, you're afraid that, well, maybe nothing will work for me. And therefore, I'm going to give up on life at the age of 29. And I don't think you should do that. As far as on the other scale, so like a 59-year-old, you may have a circle of friends that have already well established themselves in a career or maybe even retired. They're at the beach playing golf or whatever, and you're trying to start over as a coder at age 59. And I think all of those fears place doubt into your psyche to whether you can do this or not. The other thing is you have a lot of negative people in your life and a lot of people have all of this. We all have those kind of people that simply say, you want a career change at 39 years old? And you know, like that's not your degree. What are you doing? You can't do that. Coding's for smart people. And you say, thanks mom, thanks a lot. You know, so you have a lot of people around you that will look at your situation and your life change and they'll project their fear into you and that causes you not to pursue coding. So if you're out there today and you're from 29 to 59, I'm here to tell you you're not too old to learn to code, but let's talk about four ways that we can fight ageism as we go through the interview process. So when we're combating ageism, I think one of the things that people do a lot is they downplay or try to not talk about their life experience especially if you have a broad work experience and you've done a lot of things, what you need to do is take that life experience and make that a positive and turn that into like, I know about this industry. For example, we had a guy that came through Coder Foundry here and he was a mortgage broker. And so instead of like hiding the fact that you're a mortgage broker and then now you're learning to code, play up on that experience because you do know a lot of things about a lot of systems in that area of finance. And so I think that you can relay those kind of skills and things that you've learned in a non-technical role and they apply very well to a technical role. So if you know something about an industry and that could even be restaurants, try to put that in terms of a system and how systems work. So you don't need to hide from the fact that you worked at this restaurant or you worked as a mortgage broker or you worked as something else, I want you to highlight that. The second thing with work experience is you can paint yourself as a great employee. And I think this is really important because the soft skills do matter in this industry. The hard skills matter, but like, hey, showing up, meeting deadlines, being easy to work with, all of those things matter. So you take your life experience to count and don't try to hide it, try to accentuate that to the employer and relay that as how you would be a great employee as a coder because I did X, Y, and Z. Or, hey, if your life experience lines up with other industries that have coding, maybe you can work at a bank or something where else that is working in mortgage and therefore your coding and your life experience completely match up. And that's what we do a lot at Coder Founder. We try to take your work experience and present you to companies where that experience matters and then show them, oh, by the way, they also know how to code, but they know a lot about mortgages. In general, do not downplay your life experience. Find a way to relate it to the job that you're interviewing for. In defeating ageism, I think one thing that we need to think about is you. And think about this. Are you flexible? And I think if you can convince yourself to be more flexible in the types of roles you'll take, the geographic location you'll work in, 
you're going to be better well perceived when you go to an interview. In other words, like I'm willing to start at the bottom and start over. Even if you're coming from a management position, say at a mortgage manager, or maybe you were running a restaurant or something like that. And now you're going to be a junior dev in a cube wearing headphones. You need to be flexible enough and allow yourself to be able to take those roles. Because what I tell every Coder Founder student is this. I need you to get that first job and get one year of work experience on your resume. And then this whole world of software development really does open up for you after that. But if I can't get you to take that first job, then it's real hard for you to break in. And one way to do that is be flexible. Be flexible where you can work. So maybe you move, maybe you widen your geographic search. Maybe you're willing to make a longer commute in order to get that opportunity to work as a software development. Second thing that I think you need to think about is this, humility. I want you to think about, am I humble? Am I appreciative of the job I have? Especially if you're older in life, sometimes we can become very cranky. <laughs> we can become inflexible and not very humble about where we're at. And we want to tell everyone about our life experience and we can become get off my lawn guy. Get off my lawn. Instead, what I want you to think about, even if you're working for someone that's 20 years younger than you, that's your manager, I want you to think about being humble and being able to contribute to the company both as a coder, but also as an encouraging member and not be this inflexible, grumpy coder guy. So if you can be very humble and be appreciative of the opportunity that you have here, I think you can be well on your way to defeating ageism at the end of you. Another key aspect of being ageism is having a really strong portfolio. And that reminds me, this video is sponsored by Atlantic.net. Now Atlantic.net provides great VPS hosting and they're offering a free one gig virtual server with SSDs, block storage, and snapshots for one year. That's a free server for one year, plus $25 in free credits to use on other services they offer. Try Atlantic.net to host your portfolio, develop, test, or launch that next project. So go to Atlantic.net slash CoderFoundry and enter the code Bobby to get that $25 free credit. So you need a really strong portfolio, a portfolio that is hosted, um, um, like with Atlantic.net. You need to have it hosted so that someone can actually look at it pre-interview. Um, you don't want to have it just in your GitHub where someone has to download it, compile it, and look at it that way. You want to have something that's easy for them to get to and easy to see and walk through the, through the functionality in your portfolio. If you're creating projects like we do at Coder Founder, we can recreate uh, multiple um, business level projects. Um, think about this. It needs to have demo logins. It needs to practice security. It needs to be complicated enough to have a database that shows that you can solve complex problems. Things not on your portfolio or things like tic-tac-toe or um, word games or things like that. Look at serious business level projects and you can look at the one project guaranteed to get you a job where we talk about the bug tracker as well, one of the videos that we've made. But you need to have a rock star portfolio and then there's this. After you spend all this time building the portfolio, when you get to the interview, you do need to ask them to look at it. Hopefully your recruiter or you have like kind of sent that along with your resume and your portfolio link and they've already looked at it. But if they haven't had the chance to look at it yet, just simply politely ask if they'll review it with you during the interview and tell them like, I think you could ask me a lot of questions, but I really believe that if you look at my portfolio, it'll show you what my skills and the things that I can, and the things that I can accomplish here at your company. And then we can see if I'm a good fit for you. But, but just take a time to look at my portfolio. So to sum it up, you need to have business projects, you needs to be hosted, and then when you get to interview, you do need to show it to that interviewer and, and walk them through it. So in our quest to get a job, regardless of our age, um, and then overcoming ageism sometimes in the interview process, here's one key factor that may seem obvious, but it's not really all the time. You're trying to like learn coding. And so like you spend all this time learning. And then once you get to the point to where you got a job, the learning sometimes can stop and you don't really keep progressing. The thing that I want you to think about is you need to be eager to learn and naturally inquisitive about like new software languages, new software development methods. You need to always constantly be improving yourself. And this needs to project in the interview process that you're eager to learn new things. Um, we had a graduate here from Coder Foundry that was in her late 50s. 
And we trained here in .NET, but at the time an interview came up and the role was in PHP. Um, and what the, the interviewer wanted them was to complete a test project before they would interview them in PHP. And she, this person did not know PHP, but they jumped in, learned it, did some Googling, created the test project in PHP and sent it over and got hired. And that showed an eagerness to pick up new things, eagerness to learn, and really kind of like, I'm really excited about working here and I really want to work here, so I'm willing to put in some effort and some time to learn new things. So when you're also, when you're on the job, if you're older um, and they change stacks on you, I don't want you to be a complainer. I want you to like, okay, that's cool. Let me jump in and learn that. So if suddenly you go from, you know, .NET, regular .NET to .NET Core, I want you to be eager to learn that. Or if they ask you to take on a power a PowerShell project, I want you to be eager to do that as well. So I think this eagerness to learn new things and to try new things will serve you well in your career. And if you can express that in the interview, regardless of your age, and you, you stack in a great portfolio, you're probably gonna get hired. To sum it all up, we have four ways to defeat ageism. And if that could be a 29, 39, a 49, or 59, whatever it is. And I think you need to like highlight your life experience do not hide your life experience. Find a way to relate that to the job at hand. Second, I think you need to um, make sure that you're flexible in your job search and flexible in the type of roles you'll take. And also practice humility. Don't be grumpy coder person and don't be inflexible in the things that you do. And the third thing is you need to have a rockstar portfolio. Don't put toy projects on it, put serious business projects on it. And fourth and finally is eager to learn. I want you to be able to constantly be in this learning mode and it doesn't stop after your boot camp. It doesn't stop after your college education that you're always willing to take on new projects, new languages, and always willing to learn and don't stop with what you know today and keep learning. And I think if you put all of those together, you're well on the way to get a software development job, regardless of age. Hey, if you like this video, please subscribe to our channel. Also, hit the little bell for notifications when we release all the new content. Also, please comment. We would love to interact with you in the comments. We try to answer each and every comment. I hope this helps. Good luck and keep coding. <laughs>